Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be discussing about two gases. When uh, let's see uh, and proceed. So, uh, for any group G, which is cyclic group, we have two gases. We can from this group G, we may select one element A, right? Now, this element A could have either finite order or infinite order. So, let's discuss one by one for each of the cases. So, here in the first case, we assume that the order of this element A is finite. Then in that case, what would happen? We would construct all the elements by taking the powers of A, right? This is what we usually do. So, here by taking powers, what we are doing, we are actually multiplying uh, all the elements within this group which is generated by A. So multiplication in this group which is generated by A that is essentially done by addition modulo n. Now you can observe this thing how this thing is there because what you do in uh, this uh, group which is constructed or generated by A, we actually multiply two numbers like this. In the first number it would be like this A to the power i because we are taking it from uh, the subgroup which is generated by A. another number could be written like this A raised to power j and we need to multiply both of them. When we multiply both of them we would have some other number again of the same kind which is A to the power k right where k is some other number. So you see what we are doing here the calculation is adding the powers by the exponent law so it would be a to the power i plus j and this i plus j should always be taken mod n why because because it is because we we are uh, having the order of a as finite because uh, if this is not done by taking mod n what would we have uh, by taking the order of a as finite so let's say the order of a is n right so uh, in this case we would have a raised to power n as equal to identity so that means if you do not do mod n we would have even larger numbers than e and for that we uh, would have elements which are not present in the group itself because the group is finite and it is made up of the powers of a so that means we have to perform mod n and why n is considered here in this case because it is the order of the element n so after uh, this n we would again have the same element so the cycle ends at this number n so that is why we are using this mod n here so you see the multiplication here a to the power i a to the power j is nothing but it is equal to a to the power j k right and this uh, is performed such that we, we just have to add up the powers and take mod n so whatever is the answer that is k and that would surely be in your group in your finite cyclic group right so no matter what group g is if you know that that group is cyclic and it is uh, and the order of element is finite that you have chosen so the multiplication in this group cyclic group generated by a this works as the same as addition in uh, the group zn which is addition modulo n right so this is a very powerful observation that is made another case uh, where we have the order of a as infinite then in that case multiplication in the cyclic group that works as the same as addition in the set of or the group of integers under addition right why this is so because when you multiply two numbers one is a to the power i second one is a to the power j then the power simply add up i plus j and here because we have infinite number of elements the order is infinite so therefore this i plus j could be as large as possible so therefore no modular arithmetic is required in this case right so you see we obtain two things from here one is uh, addition in uh, zn this is similar to multiplication in this cyclic group generated by a whenever the order of the element is finite this is one observation another observation is that uh, we have addition in uh, this group of integers similar to multiplication in the cyclic group generated by a whenever the order of a is infinite right so based on these observations uh, we can mention that 
the cyclic group z and the group zn both of them they serve as the prototypes for all cyclic groups now this is a very general statement and this is a true statement right so you should make a point to uh, note this one right and uh, next let's uh, say that there are many algebraists Uh, which say that there is essentially only one cyclic group of each order so uh, no two cyclic group would be present which would have the same order right so every group cyclic group has different order so uh, although there may be many different sets of this form a to the power n but uh the only way we can operate on these sets is of the kind that we have discussed with the integers and integers mod n right moreover the algebra is they do not really care what the elements of the set are in fact they care only about the algebraic properties of the sets now this is important uh, when we are looking at uh, a thing a set or a group in an abstract way right so that means they only do care about the elements of the set which uh, how they can be combined and not really what they are right so they are looking for the ways in which the elements of set can be combined together so all this could be summarized in this result which states that every cyclic group that is isomorphic now isomorphic is a term which we'll be studying later on and that is why i'm not going on to the proof of this result right uh, so you for the time being you can assume that there is a similarity between this cyclic group and the group of integers or that of integers word n right so i hope you understood this one well that is it for this video thank you for watching